Hey everyone, welcome back. Welcome to the seventh episode of the energy management series. Almost no one gets the best ideas when they are actually working or at work. If you study some of the great inventors of the world, most of them got their breakthrough ideas when they were in shower or in bed or listening to music or walking in nature. You get your best ideas in those moments in life when you know the problem but you are not actively seeking a solution. No, this is not my opinion. These are some of the true facts proven by scientific research and well written by author Michael Gelb who wrote the famous book on the genius Leonardo da Vinci named How to Think Like Leonardo da Vinci. But can everyone be a genius like Leonardo? Maybe not. But if we know how to manage our mental energy, then we can also improve our thinking and innovation power. In this episode, I'll give you three important tips on how you can manage your mental energy. So keep watching till the end. Don't miss out for a single second because what I'm going to tell you might change your life. Mental energy is what we use to organize our lives and focus our attention. Managing mental energy is so important in our daily life. Low mental energy means that you will be unable to focus on anything that you do for a long period of time. You will be disorganized, you will feel mentally exhausted at times. You will be unable to think something out of the box and all these affect your performance at work and in your life as well. When your manager will ask you to think about a solution to a problem, if you have low mental energy, you will be unable to come up with a great solution consistently. If you are a student, then low mental energy will mean that you will find it difficult to solve complex mathematical questions or memorize verses quickly. Most of us are just living our lives from a day to day basis, just by eating, working and sleeping without following any process or habits. And that's where the root cause of many problem lies. If we know the science, the process, the techniques of managing our mental energy, then we can live a much better, happier life, even with less money. Now, it was important for me to explain to you on why you should seriously consider consciously managing your mental energy every single day. Hope I have been able to make you understand. So now, let's get straight into those three ways to manage your mental energy. Let's get started. Number one on my list is rest and recovery. You might not know this or might have never thought about this consciously. Thinking uses a great deal of your energy. Your brain might be just 2% of your body weight, but it actually needs 25% of your body's oxygen supply to function properly. So if you think only by doing physical exercise, you use most of your energy, it is very wrong. Now think about physical exercise. After you have finished your exercise or you have finished your running, what do you do? You have some food and you take some rest. Your body craves to recover the lost energy and you should take some rest to renew your energy. However, you do not give your brain rest after hours and hours of working or thinking or writing or reading. The only time it can rest is when you are sleeping. However, it craves periodic rest and recovery which it does not get all throughout the day. In this same series, I have made videos earlier on why we need to rest every 2-3 to three hours. What's the logic and science behind it? If you have not watched that particular video, then you can click on the link at the top and view that. Inability to recover mental energy results in errors in judgment, mistakes at work and low creativity as well. Your conscious thinking mind is super busy all throughout the day. It is very important to silence it strategically. So how can you do this? If you are working or thinking or writing or reading or doing any sort of creative task, every two to three hours, try taking a break unless you are in a flow and you have lost track of time. Now this particular break not necessarily should be a long break. It can be a two minutes or a five minutes or a ten minutes break as well. However, when you do take a break, stop thinking about work. Mentally try to detach yourself completely. It's kind of unplugging and replugging yourself. 
you will see that your focus and concentration level improve drastically if you can do this exercise consistently. Another thing you can do is meditation. Again, does not take much time of yours, but it helps to silence your conscious brain. By the way, the great polymath and genius Leonardo da Vinci was also found taking frequent breaks and naps between his work. Number two on the list is balanced approach. Famous neurosurgeon Roger Sperry won the Nobel Prize in 1967 for his split brain research in which he explained the different functions of the left and the right side of the brain. So if you look at the human brain from front or top, this picture here helps you to understand that your left side of the brain is the seat of language, analytics and various cognitive functions whereas the right side is the seat of emotions, intuitions, imaginations and creativity. It is fair enough to say that any normal human being uses their left side of the brain more than the right side on a daily basis at work. And that is why it is very easy to operate when somebody asks you for a report rather than when someone asks you to suggest new solution or a new idea. Now since you are training certain left side brain functions daily and not training the right side brain functions, so over a period of time you start losing your creativity and overall mental energy. So a balanced approach is needed. The right side of the brain is less time conscious, more inclined towards problem solving by intuitive leap and sudden insights. Even the science behind creativity tells us about its five stages. The first stage of creativity is called the first insight. It is the initial inspiration of any idea. The second stage is the saturation. In this stage, you start gathering information from multiple sources. The third stage of creativity is called the incubation period. This stage involves mulling over various ideas. The fourth stage of creativity is called the illumination. In this stage, you experience the breakthroughs, the eureka moments. And the fifth and the final stage is the verification stage. This stage involves analyzing, codifying, translating breakthroughs into rational, comprehensible language. And that's how creativity and innovations happen. Now, if you look at these five stages and map them to your brain functions, then we find that the first stage, which was called the first insight, is a right side brain function. The second stage, the saturation stage, is the left brain function. Once again, the third stage and the fourth stage, that is the incubation and the illumination stage, is the right brain function. And finally, the verification stage is actually a left brain function. Now, wait a minute. Did you once again notice any pattern? Did you notice the frequent oscillation between your right and left brain functions? Dominance of left brain functions diminishes your mental energy, but dominance of right brain functions renews your mental energy. So other than rest and recovery, you must try to strategically activate your right brain functions every single day. Find out a few hours every day when you can spend some time all alone without any distractions. It can be just a walk in the park or sitting all alone doing nothing at all or thinking about any problems that you have or engaging in any arts like painting or playing music or anything that requires creative thinking. This will constantly exercise your right brain functions and help manage your mental energy. The third and the final thing to do is to challenge your brain. As you continue to age, conditions of your heart, lungs, kidneys starts deteriorating and one day you leave this world. You all know this for a fact. However, on the other hand, with constant use, conditions of your brain keeps improving with age and your brain becomes sharper the more you use it. However, the key thing to remember here is if you continue to use your brain and challenge your brain. This brings us to the concept of neuroplasticity of the brain. Plasticity of the brain cells tells us that every time you learn something new, your brain builds new connections. High plasticity has been observed during childhood when you are in your schools and colleges, always reading books, learning new things and playing some sports or exercising on running. If you observe carefully, as you age, 
all these activities keep reducing and thereby plasticity of your brain reduces. That is exactly why when you become old, it becomes very difficult for you all of a sudden to learn and understand new things or to memorize things. Doing exercise or running pushes more blood and hence more oxygen to your brain, which in turn stimulates our brain chemicals. Our brain chemicals help to repair brain cells and prevents further damage. So all in all, you see how important it is to keep doing some moderate exercises every day and learning new things all throughout your life. Continue reading books or learning new things and do some form of exercise all throughout your life. Keep challenging your brain and maintain high neuroplasticity. I hope I have been able to make you understand through complex subject in a very short time and I hope that you will try to practice these in your life and improve your mental energy. Do remember to check out the entire playlist of the series so you can also learn about managing your physical energy, emotional energy and your spiritual energy. You can click here right now to start watching them. Do not miss out on the next episode though, which will be the final one of the series where I will be discussing about how you can manage your spiritual energy. If you have liked this video, then please do not forget to share this video with your friends and family members and help let us lead grow and inspire people to take up leadership roles. Till next time, take care and goodbye.